Adorama TV presents Getting the Shot with Corey Rich. Hi, I'm Corey Rich, and you're watching Adorama TV. Adorama.com is the home for all things video and still photography. It's where I buy all of my equipment for both professional needs and uh, just for fun. Today, I'm going to talk about shooting action with a long lens. In the ski photography world, there's a lot of unpredictable aspects to making a great photograph, but all of those variables need to come together in order to make a great ski action photograph. Years ago, I remember waking up to an amazing amount of snow that was not forecast. Overnight, we had almost three feet of snow fall at Kirkwood Mountain Resort, just outside of Lake Tahoe, California. Ideally, I would have planned for that, and I would be at the resort early and loading the chair early because I've been shooting marketing imagery for Kirkwood for almost 10 years now. But on this particular morning, I woke up very early, saw that it had snowed an enormous amount, but I knew the opportunity to do an early load before the public was out of the question. That needs to be planned for in advance. So immediately, I jumped in my car, I grabbed my camera bag, I drove out to Kirkwood Mountain Resort, uh, grabbed two athlete friends of mine, and I jumped on the first chair. We were, we were, but we were with the public. Now, that's a pretty key factor because when you're with the public, it, it adds a layer of challenge. It means you're like a bunch of rats chasing each other, trying to get to the fresh powder stashes. But that's a challenge when you're trying to make pictures because you want the fresh untap, untapped snow. But on the other hand, you're, it's very dangerous when you have public flying past you at full speed trying to search for those untracked patches of snow. So, of course, I was armed with a helmet on my head, two athletes that I could work with, and a camera bag with the necessary equipment to shoot action as we moved around the resort. Oftentimes, the way I do that is we go to the far edges of the resort where, you know, the public is going to take the most obvious lines straight out of the gate because of it. why not? And so we went farther than the public would go. I would ski down through the trees, look up, find a patch of snow with a radio. I'd walkie-talkie back up to my athlete, Ryan, in this case. And I would say, Ryan, you're going to ski skiers right of this tree. Make a hard left turn. I give him very detailed directions in terms of what I want him to do. So one of the variables is your athlete. The other variable is the photographer. I've got to actually nail the picture. And that means from a technical perspective, the correct exposure, but also from a composition perspective, I need to really frame that image correctly. In this case, I was using, I keep a Lopro flip side 20 liter sport on my back, and I, I knew that I was going to be shooting long lens. When I shot this photograph, I was probably using a 300 millimeter 2.8 lens. I wanted a telephoto lens so that I could really compress the background and keep the viewer focused on the action. Shallow depth of field, clean background. Today my go-to lens is the 200 to 400 f4 lens. Incredibly sharp, and I would be today on a Nikon D4S. Then I think I might have been shooting film, to be honest. This was quite a ways back. So I pick my position, I've skied in from the side, I've framed up my shot, I've already, I'm on manual exposure, so I'm checking, this is backlit, right? It's a backlit image on snow, which I love backlit snow images because the exposure difference between the highlight and the shadow is usually a stop or two, and that, of course, fits into the latitude of the high-end Nikon cameras that we use today. And the idea that you can shoot one picture and make that one perfect sports action moment, it's just not true. It takes lots of frames, it takes thinking through your situation in advance, and then really laying on that shutter so that your, act, your subject comes through your frame and then when you get back to your studio, when you get back to your computer, you look at those frames and you decide which of those frames is the decisive moment. And in this case, this is the summary moment that really epitomizes that powder day at Kirkwood Mountain Resort. So I hope what you take away from this video is that you're thinking about all of the variables. When it comes to shooting in the snow, you're thinking about one, the conditions. How much did it snow? What's the temperature? Two, getting to an untracked location early. Working with a decent model. Four, you as the photographer, or myself as the photographer, I need the right equipment, the right lensing, and then technically I need to execute well. Correct exposure, in focus, 
I'm shooting lots of frames, composition looks good, and if all of that comes together, then you've got a great photograph. Be sure to check out Adorama's newest contest. You can win a ton of really cool stuff. I'm Corey Rich. Thanks for listening to Adorama TV. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do. You can follow us on social media. There's tons of free educational content like this getting published on a regular basis. So please come back and most importantly, have fun shooting. Do you want great looking prints at low cost? Be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.